if I was to title this, it'd be four questions, right? Data lake, data warehouse, data lake house, or a no lake, no house. Common patterns that we see at customers, okay? When we talk about data lakes, data warehouses, data lake houses, or none of the above, or all of the above, we see data warehouses uh, still today. So data goes straight into a warehouse. It gets used for lots of different purposes. We see data lakes and customers that use data lakes uh, and report off of data lakes take in different data. You'll notice the big difference here is just text data because data lakes can accept data that's not structured, which we'll talk about that in a second. But we see data lakes, we see data warehouses. These patterns can be combined though. So sometimes we'll see customers that have a data lake and a data warehouse. Other times we'll see customers that have none of the above. And my final favorite pattern is a multiverse, which is multiple data lakes, multiple warehouses to the point where you don't even know what is like, what is happening. This is the part that's really important. So when we talk about data lakes, data warehouse, these are concepts. They are not technologies anymore. They used to be technology oriented. That's arguable, but they used to be more technology oriented. They are no longer technology oriented. You can have a data lake and a data warehouse within the same technology now, or vice versa. You can have a data warehouse that acts like a data lake in the same technology now. When we talk about the concepts of data lake and data warehouse, this is the stuff that's really important for you to understand. When we say data lake, we're talking about something that is file oriented primarily. That is a collection model. So if we're focusing on collecting data, as opposed to curating data, we're talking about a data lake. We're talking about curating data, that's a data warehouse. Curating is like, we are going to be applying logic, organization, structure, governance, order to the data to present it as information. It's strict. That fits more into a data warehouse-esque paradigm or concept. If we're talking about just get the data on platform, just collect it, leave it in the state in which it came from. We're not monitoring quality. We're not integrating it. We're not governing it. It's mostly raw. There's not business logic being applied to it. If that is what is happening, I can call that a data lake, even if it lives in something that looks like a database. Because conceptually, the purpose of a data lake is to collect data. The purpose of a warehouse in their hand is to organize it apply consistency, business rules, logic, structure, like a house, right? So this is very much raw material. Data Lake is raw material. Data Warehouse is finished goods. Therefore, because they're just concepts, they can be combined. So we start talking about data bricks, right? You can combine the concept of a data warehouse and a data lake to enable machine learning. Machine learning historically is thought of as going against data in the data lake, raw data for machine learning. That is a bit of a misnomer. So, um, machine learning benefits from data quality, data governance, having business logic applied equivalently to that as the data that's used in BI as well. So the question is not about whether or not it is quality data, but the point of a data lake is that it's unmonitored. There's nothing there that's enforcing quality rules. The data may be of high quality in the lake, but there's nothing there that's saying like, this is of high quality. There's not processes built in to necessarily improve quality. Snowflake has the same concept, data warehouse, data lake, and you'll hear them talk about these things uh, as a single platform because it's, they're just concepts. Now that's why you hear Snowflake and Databricks saying, data warehouse, data lake, doesn't matter because the concepts, they support all those different use cases. 